Three, two, one. We are live. Welcome back, my dear nosies. This is a nose nose. Welcome back. Uh, this is the first and only channel dedicated entirely to the lesser known, to the long forgotten, or to the simply obscure items in perfumery. If you've never been here before, grab a drink. Um, lay back, make sure you're comfortable because this is going to be a pretty lively conversation um, and collaborative approach to reviewing perfume and perfumery. Make sure you participate and if you log in, please let us know where you're coming in from. Taffy J reporting for, <laughs> for class. This is cute. Today we're going to be talking about Maria Candida Gentile. I'm going to go straight in because I've been uh, waiting for this for a long time. Not sure why um, I took this long, but I have to give you an anecdotal piece of information. For the first time ever, I was nervous before I started today's session, just in case this might actually get to the person I'm going to be talking about. So for the first time ever, I was worried about what to wear. I was, you know, replaying scenarios in my head, trying to plan for things to say, things to not forget, and so on and so forth, which is kind of cute. I never get <laughs> uh, nervous unless I really, really, really respect somebody and I really, really respect the um, person whose eponymous house were we're talking about today. Let's see who do we have live. We have Therapeutic Fragrance from Portland, Oregon. Ioana from Sibiu. Vlad Stenescu, hello. The Strange from Bucharest. Rich Mitch, <laughs> we are the Pet Shop Boys. Liliana, Nicoletta, and Dan. Welcome all. So today we're talking about Maria Candida Gentile. Maria Candida Gentile is one of my top uh, houses and it's a favorite of mine will stay hi ashback bangladesh is with us hello will stay one of my favorite houses because it resonates with me at levels that i decided not to fight um it's very important that when we find things we simply like we simply smile from we simply uh, feel in our fibers um, if it doesn't bother anybody, if it doesn't hurt anybody or anything, I don't think we should question them uh, it's so seldom nowadays that we encounter such pleasurable life experiences that when they do happen if we're happy I say we let them happen this is one of those instances Maria Candida Gentile is a house I discovered through a very fortunate mistake I made it is a an Italian house I am very partial to Italian perfumery as I've said before I believe uh, when it comes to functional perfumery in other words not extremely artistic not experimental not um, um, trying to convey any other message other than this is something to wear, this is something that you can use to represent yourself, um, or just simply in conjunction with your mood at a particular time. Um, this is uh, uh, ready to wear, Prêt-à-Porter versus Haute Couture, both of which have um, a role and a space on the market. But if I look at perfumery and styles of perfumery at large, I believe Italian perfumery falls into the ready-to-wear, high-quality category, in my humble opinion. It's more comfortable, it's easy, easier to mix and match, easier to just throw in, easier to um, make it your own, whereas other kinds of perfumery, um, in particular American perfumery, which can be highly experimental or highly... Uh, political, uh, the approach is slightly different. So um, I think that's the closest parallel I can find. In any case, Maria Candida Gentile is a house I uh, discovered through a very fortunate uh, happening. I was browsing the internetics as I normally do, and I came across one of the bottles. Now, it was $50, uh, just put it out there. That is not what Maria Candida Gentile is uh, sell for. 
this bar was $50 and it came from um, a seller in Florida who had plenty of other fragrances. They had a lot of Maria Candida Gentiles and they were, they seemed like they were liquidating some stock. I had not seen or heard of Maria Candida Gentile, but I looked at the box and I looked at the bottles and it spoke to me um, in a way that I admit is dictated primarily by experience after you've passed some psychological um, and, uh, 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 points and uh, surpassed some, some price levels. Um, there's one at $50, there's one at 100 all perfumistas out here uh, know that, you start recognizing some markers for attention, maybe not for quality or uh, for the smell itself, but you do recognize the markers for attention to detail. And a lot, a, a, a lot of times, um, attention to detail in packaging uh, expresses attention to detail in execution of fragrance as well. Again, that doesn't speak to whether or not you're gonna like the fragrance, but it does give you an idea of intention. If something's being thrown in a bucket uh, to produce something that's gonna sell is different from having an idea, trying to execute against it and producing something that is coherent with that idea and matches the rest of your line. I looked at all of the offerings from that seller and I purchased one. I said, okay, 50 bucks, let's try it. Um, I received it. And the day I received it, I ordered two more, <laughs> also for $50. So I've, I, I scored big there. After which the seller rose the price to 70 and then to 80. And then they were out. In total, I ended up buying six of her fragrances, two of which I no longer have. One was a gift to my father and the other one um, made its way into a swap to somebody who really, really wanted it. I'm left with four. I'm gonna talk about them uh, in short today and I'm gonna present one a little bit in more detail. But let me tell you a little bit about the house of Maria Candida Gentile. These are two examples of the fragrances I have of hers. Um, Maria Candida Gentile is a house uh, that started in 2009 by a person called Maria Candida Gentile, um, who made me giddy today and nervous that I'm not wearing the right thing, that I'm not sorting the right accessories, that I'm going to say something dumb or something <laughs> uh, tongue-in-cheek, which I will, of course, because, you know, it's me. But it's the first person who ever made me uh, nervous and gave me some sort of live <laughs> live uh, session anxiety, which I welcome. That only happens with people I respect. Um, so that should be a very good sign for everybody. Uh, let's say, let's see, who do we have? Who's new? Seti from Washington State. La Cremiara. Ashfak. Yes. Hit that like button. Kozin, Silvia, and Geza from Prague. Welcome, everyone. Maria Candida Gentile is one of the few Italian perfumers in the past 30 years who received the title of Maître Parfumier from the Grasse Institute of Perfumery, the Grasse Institute of Perfumery in France. We've all heard of it. We've all seen perfumer this, perfumer that. The truth is um, there are very few that graduate from Grasse with the title. I'm sure there are intermediary titles uh, that can be associated with one's training as a perfumer. But the truth is, in the world, there are very few who, the, uh, uh, um, people who have a Maître Parfumier title uh, from this prestigious institute. Maître Parfumier means a certain great deal. This person who started the house does have this title. Uh, like I said, back in 2013, uh, when, is, when is the last time I read an interview of hers, you smells good. Hi, Eugene is with us. If you don't know who Eugene is, you should go look it up. Whack Packers and you smells good and all that stuff. So 
Um, in 2013 is uh, the last uh, time I read an interview with Maria Candida Gentile. And um, back then she was still the last Italian perfumer with the Maître Parfumier title uh, from Grasse. Um, maybe others have graduated in the meantime who are from Italy and certifications as necessary for um, activating as a, as a full stat perfumer. I'm still looking for that complete list. I wasn't able to find it. If any of you know how to find this list of accredited official Metz Parfumier, please share with me. But in any case, Maria Candida Gentile is one of them. She has a lot of fans. Uh, Luca Turin is a fan of hers. A lot of big uh, people who are in, in a position to... I do not know if it is a proprietary title. It might be just by tradition and history. Uh, I'm sure it's not a syntagma that one can... Um, make proprietary unless they trademarked it, which I don't think they did because we have met Parfumé, Parfumeur et Gantier, um, and there would be a an overlap, a legal overlap there. So for as long as we have met Parfumeur et Gantier, which is not associated with Grass, um, I'm sure that the title cannot be copyrighted. But I do not know because I don't know how legalities and liabilities and compliance works in, in, in this field in Europe. Is it like a habilitation degree? I don't know what that means, habilitation degree. Please explain. So um, Maria graduates from Grasse a long time ago, uh, and she goes on to be a very successful perfumer and contributes um, or some quite famous formulas to houses that you know about. Formentia Annunziata is one of them, um, and Profumi del Forte is another. Um, Vittoria Apuana, which is a has a cult following from Profumi del Forte, is uh, built by Maria Candida Gentile as a nose. And then in 2009, she decides she's going to... Uh, thank you. Do report back, please. I learned from you more than you learned from me. So <laughs> let's do it. Beyond PhD. Oh, I understand. Habilitation is that, here it's called a postdoctoral degree. Habilitation degree, I understand. Okay, cool. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it's a postdoctoral. I think it's something else. <clears throat> I think it's a, it's a completely niche direction and category for degrees independent of MD, PhD. It's it's not calculated in the same way as um, as all the other ones, I don't think. But I, I have no idea. Worth looking into, please report back. So in 2009, Maria Candida Gentile decides to uh, start her eponymous house, named very simply Maria Candida Gentile, with which she created um, not too many fragrances, which I command her for. Uh, I believe she has a total of 18. The last of which was launched in 2016. I have no information on what happened since 2016. I really wish she would continue. As far as I know, things have not been discontinued as of now. And I sure hope they won't be because this house has all the ingredients to be on par with everything else that is public and popular today, minus the marketing. Maria Canada Gentile is not a person who self-promotes. She does not do a lot of marketing. In fact, I don't think I ever saw anything related to promotion of any kind, online or otherwise. I have not seen press releases. I have not seen any um, official, you know, corporate communication coming out of uh, of the house. The only way she's become uh, known in the co collector circles is through collectors, and I'm trying to, <laughs> to do my job and pass the word. I hope the rest of you will do too. Now, um, if I were to describe the house, I would say this. 
I understand. Keep digging. If I were to describe the house, I would say this. One, it has a signature. You recognize Maria Candida Gentile by far, blindfolded, Lee, um, even without having any uh, experience, previous experience with the house. You recognize it. Two, it's very unlike anything else out there. Um, so it has its own niche. It's very original, in my opinion. Three, it's very wearable. This is wearable fragrance. You can call it wearable art. I will not as go, go as far as calling it art. Uh, I would call it craft. There's a difference between craft and art. Uh, this is not made to make you think. This is not made to make you ponder, to transport you, to give you inspiration to create your own stuff. Uh, this is not made to speak for you or to talk for you or to grab partners or find you a good lay. This is, <laughs> sorry for, for that part, but this is not meant to do things for you other than be with you, if that makes any sense. Um, this is a rich, this is a very colorful, this is a very genteel and gentle, if you want, very appropriate with the name, right? Quentin Mathieu is here. Welcome. Uh, uh, signature. This makes you smile. This gives you pleasure. It's very simple to adore. It's very simple to understand. But the point is, you don't necessarily need to understand it, which is fantastic because nowadays I see a lot of interesting creations coming out, particularly to make you think. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of those creations, even though sometimes they are wearable and easy and whatever, they're like arts in a museum where you have to read the, the, the description. Otherwise, you don't feel anything looking at them. Once you get it, you go, oh, that's smart. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's a good point. But before reading the description, you don't. This is not that. This is not art in a museum. This is not to be touched and not uh, looked at, but not touched. This is wearable, personable, friendly, and easy to internalize, incorporate, and adapt to whatever your life's criteria, situation, circumstances might be. Thank you, Zane. We're talking about Maria Candida Gentile, which is one of my most favorite houses and most easy loves um, up until now. I purchased it without knowing anything about it. As usually, I um, reviewed the first fragrance without reading anything about um, anything, really. I prefer to do that when I, when I review a fragrance and take notes on it because I don't like to be influenced necessarily by the intention, by uh, reading what others say about the notes and so on and so forth. Sometimes um, it happens. I hear about a fragrance from somebody else and yes, I do get conditioned. We all do. But most of the times, particularly when I um, have a first contact with a house I know nothing about, I like to start tabula rasa, and this is the case with this fragrance. I loved it so much that I ended up buying five more, two of which uh, are no, no longer with me, but four of which I have in my house and I will be talking about um, shortly. So if I have words about the house at large, uh, they would be that it's very particular, it's a very lovable and simple to internalize, makes you smile, and that's all there is to it. And three, um, it's very coherent in and of itself. Everything makes sense. There's a signature. It's a very substantial signature. It's a very particular signature, so it's original. And fragrances, you can tell, are part of the same uh, line. Uh, so these three things are 
you know, enough for me to, to pump it right to the top of my prefer preferences when it comes to houses at large. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Very important person. Don't. My friend Anna's making fun of me. I don't know exactly why she's making fun of me right now, but she's making fun of me and I will take it because I love her. Ana El Perfume is a blog. If you've never read it, do so. She writes in English as well as Spanish, and her nose is out there. Um, Olivier Cresp only got the Master Perfumer title in 2007 from Fumant. Yeah, it's not easy to get. It is not easy to get. Um, a few other details. Uh, I believe the packaging is stellar because it makes sense for who she is. You know, we always look at people and we go, oh, that she has such a style. She has, or he, he's so sophisticated. And that person hears you admiring their scarf or their gloves or whatever. And they go, here, take it. And you're like, no, 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 no. It doesn't work for me, but it works for you. It makes sense for you. It makes sense that you would wear it considering what other things you've worn in the past and so on. I love uh, consistency. I think consistency and authenticity doesn't matter if it's on my taste or not, but authenticity is what makes people provide trust. It's what makes people um, become loyal. And I believe Maria Candida Gentile has that as a house because everything they put out, including the way they put things out, is consistent with their idea um, and the concept of the house. The, the packaging, um, I, I'm going to show you two boxes here. The packaging looks the same for all fragrances. The boxes are the same size, which I think is brilliant. Um, it's the same type of quality. The bottles are in two sizes. There's this, which is an extra, and there's this, which is an eau de parfum. Uh, allora... Uh, 30 mils and 100 mils. I don't believe there's anything in between, but I do think there are smaller ones of 15 um, mils. And I believe that's it. I don't know if they have um, um, vials or testers of any other kind. Um, packaging is extremely, extremely well composed uh it's in line with the policy of the house of keeping things as natural as possible up to 97 percent of her ingredients are natural i don't really um know if that makes a difference for you or not but i tell you because this is the information i found and maybe it is important um uh everything is in this um very hard cardboard, very well printed, very textured. Probably you can't see on a white, but maybe you can see it on a blue. It's a texture that looks woven somehow. And the uh, print is always in gold on the front, as you see here. Inside the box, there's a bottle. Sorry, the the pink is, is a pink. <laughs> it comes. There might be others. Usually I try to not have them, but it happens throughout the day. I'm a very, very uh, active person. Inside the box, every box has this. Um, and I don't know why I cannot take it out. Hello, hello, hello. I wanna show you what's on the bottom of this. Um, it's something that I hadn't seen before. Um, before before uh, Maria, it's true that other houses are doing it nowadays. Um, it became it became relatively popular, and through popular demand, is here to stay. That houses, just like restaurants do, just like um, you know, a lot of uh, fashion in the um, um, industry companies started to do. They declared the provenance of things we use eggs from free range farm so and so we use um organic cotton that is fair trade and so on and so forth um i hadn't seen it in perfumery before her and this is 
what usually comes out like that um, of the box. Each of these boxes, the, the, the big bottles have this. It's a map of the world with a list of all the places they source their materials from. Um, the United States ha provides cedar and mint. Venezuela, tonka beans. Morocco, jasmine rose, um, a different kind of mint. Spain is labdanum and so on and so forth. Um, up to Madagascar, Russia, India, Sumatra, Java, Indonesia, Japan. Um, it's a long list of places in Egypt, I see, Turkey, Bulgaria. Um, long list of places which they declare for their uh, sources in perfumery. I think that is fantastic. I command it. I applaud it. And it's been going on, again, in her case, for years before others started to follow suit. Um, makes me like it, trust it, and so on and so forth. On this other side, it says, Maria Candida Gentile met Parfumier. And as you can tell, luxury is about staying true to yourself. That's exactly what I was mentioning earlier. Authenticity is something that we need more of and can always use no matter who we are and what we do. So this is this is the presentation of the bottles. The four I ended up with are, oh, um, the bottle design, I, I wanna mention this because it's, it's also coherent with her, um, ah, nice. Let us know what you think. <coughs> um, the, um, the bottle design um, is very simple. I find it relatively French, but with a very, very particular Italian um, hand. And I want to show you something, actually. Give me a second. All right. Let me show you something. Uh, I find this very interesting, and I believe there's a coincidence. Um, there's another brand, Italian brand, that I will be talking about soon. It's called Erbe Profumi. I believe Erbe and Maria Candida Gentile are actually bottling in the same place because um, I literally studied these bottles with a microscope. I think they're uh, produced similarly. And I think the um, etiquette, the label, is also produced very similarly. Now, this is like 20 years older than this. So production-wise, printing, serigraphy, and all the, those techniques were not as perfected back then. But um, I, I believe there's a huge similarity between these two. We will be talking about Erbe at some point in the future uh, because it's a very, very important discovery of mine. Um, but um, I believe this is <laughs> therefore bottled in Italy. Um, the design of the bottle, the design of um, the label, and the uh, overall aesthetic concept of the brand was uh, perfected by Federico Lucci, who's a very well-known character in Italy because he's a um, graphic art director. He functioned in publishing and uh, publicity and advertising for 30 years. Uh, he's like one of those big guys of design and, and uh, visual concepting. Um, and he um, actually helped her uh, put this together, um, the, the visual presentation and the, the, the overall um, aesthetic of, of the brand. Um, and I think they're very eloquent in the sense that they say everything they need to say. Um, good quality glass, hefty uh, feeling. I like bottles that maintain the same kind of design. That's why I love uh, L'Artis and Parfumoir as well. For some reason, it makes sense to me. Um, the only thing that differs is the color of the label, as you can tell. So they're easy to recognize. They're easy to uh, put together. They look good as a, as a collection and so on. I like that. I do believe uh, in, in artistic flaconage, but I don't think anybody's really looking into it nowadays except for 
Stefania from Mendito Rosa. Uh, I don't know why I say I did a Grassi Mendito Rosa. I think um, uh, Thierry Mugler is the only one in, in mass um, and designer perfumery who is paying some attention to, to flaconage. But um, yes, Serge Luton, I like the idea of collection of bottles that look the same. Um, yeah, there are plenty out there. Not all of them are equally beautifully executed. This looks good because of the change in color, just like Lertisan used to uh, back in the day. So the four bottles I have here, probably uh, you made the tally by now, are Cideris, Exultat, Berry Linden, and this little putz here, Luberon. Luberon. These are the four that I have of Maria Candida Gentile. The other two that passed through my hands were uh, Gentile, I believe, which made its way relatively quickly. Actually, seven. I've had seven. Uh, Gentile and Lady Day are uh, two others that I owned like this in Parfum uh, Concentration. Both of them uh, went to um, uh, swaps. Lady Day is a fragrance that was um, uh, dedicated to Billie Holiday, um, as, as far as I know. Um, and Gentile, if I remember it correctly, hmm, Gentile was a spicy, like a fresh, spicy, crunchy, uh, herby. Um, basically kind of green um, smell. Um, and both of them were in this, I think I mentioned it, this uh, more concentrated um, parfum uh, version. The um, Gershwin fragrance is a stellar, stellar aromatic, um, balsamic, uh, spicy, a smoky fragrance. I put it uh, in the same category as Timbuktu, which is another favorite of mine, but they're incredibly different um, in execution, in notes, but also in level of stratification. I believe Gershwin is much more layered than Timbuktu. They So they uh, therefore fulfill two different um functions, if you want, in one's collection. Uh, so uh, Gershwin went uh, and is currently being used by my father and being hated on by my mother because of something in it that makes her sneeze. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know, usually we sneeze or have natural reactions to perfumes when they are built with natural ingredients. We usually have uh, allergic reactions to um, natural allergens rather than chemical compounds. Uh, of course, there are exceptions, but just putting it out there. It's a brilliant fragrance that makes my mother sneeze. See that is. Yes, it is. So uh, let's start with Cideris since um, since uh, Vlad uh, mentioned it. Cideris uh, Eau de Parfum, the one that I have, looks like this. It's in a uh, gentle... Oh, no, that's Bear Linden, sorry. It's in a gentle, um, kind of like deep... Um, I don't know what to call it. It's a true blue, but very... Gentile. Everything is very gentile um, in, in, in every aspect of any uh, type of uh, execution level for this perfumery house. See that it looks like this. Um, and as you can tell, it's been used quite a bit. Um, it's a contemplative, says Vlad. True. It is soothing. It is a, it's, it is a bomb for the soul. It's like <laughs> it's like a chicken noodle soup when you're sick. <laughs> I'm sure this is not what the, the Madama uh, Gentile wanted to hear about her fragrance, 
but there's nothing like this to lift you up and caress you. It's, it's caressing. It's, it's, um, it's a warm hand. It's, it's a soothing uh, lift of, of one's entrails. You don't need anything else to, to, to smile, to feel good, to feel taken care of, I guess. It's very, very caressing, this fragrance. I don't know any other fragrance that is particularly like this. I, um, there's, they're balsamics. They're very gentle balsamics. This is built around a beautiful myrrh. Uh, very slight uh, smoke notes. A very delicate uh, honey undertone that is not very aggressive. It's not beeswax necessarily. It's more like floral honey. Um, I feel slight um, chamomile tea, herbal tea notes um that are not necessarily very apparent all of it is very very well blended to the point where um i don't think it makes sense to separate it in notes you will find them everywhere and you will find descriptions of this everywhere but the the idea you need to leave with is this is the most caressing fragrance i've ever met in my life and just like vlad was saying above it is like a soothing balm for the soul. Uh, you put it on and you go, ah, I'm safe, kind of a thing. So this is Sideris. This is not the first one I bought. I believe this is the last one I bought. Oh, hi, Yana. Tomelis is with us. Ashfaq says, I read many Toros on Manifesto Online. I wish she would sell just like a refill. Maybe it's a good idea for her. I will convey. If I see her again, we had a connection in 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 um in milano and we've kept in touch ever since i will let her know i'm sure business ideas are always welcome for everybody the first fragrance the uh, one of the first fragrances i bought from um from uh, maria candida gentile and i stayed with is this one um barry linden is one of the most interesting greens I know. It was um, inspired, as the name says, and as you can all imagine, by the um, Stanley Kubrick um, Berlinden uh, movie that was in turn done um, uh, as a screening of um, a, a novel. This is an herbal fragrance that I hmm, uh, find very actually extremely hard to explain because it has my nemesis. The pre the the previous one was Sideris. Um, this is green to the point I cry. Uh, there's a lot of Artemisia in this and Artemisia has always been my nemesis. It's one of those things that make me, uh, my hair stand up. It's not necessarily a good thing. Um, although I appreciate and tolerate it uh, when it's blended um, seamlessly. Um, I believe it has a very slight, um, English undertone. It's, um, very sunny. It's very fresh in the sense of airy. All of her fragrances have so many layers um, that are, um, they're aired in between. They're, they're ex taking up ex uh, an extremely large space. Um, exactly. Wide aperture. So it, it, it's wide. It, it's spacey. It does give the impression of, um, a lot of Space, physical volume of space. Most of her fragrances take up a lot of space and the molecules feel like they disperse equally throughout. Um, I believe this is a masterpiece. I haven't used it much because it also has a relatively um, creamy textural note um, that makes it behave differently on my skin depending on the temperature. This is one of the fragrances that are completely different in the winter as they are in the summer. Um, it has a, again, a, a slight angelica feel. 
um, masked in there. I smell fennel pot pollen, not fennel, but fennel, fennel pollen, which is slightly savory. I've talked about it in the past. It's very uh, umami, if you want. Um, they're, um, you know, pasture flowers and plants. This is, it looks like the picture of, it looks like the movie. It, it really does. It looks like, like a picture of a pasture uh, and meadow, but not you being in the meadow, you looking at a wide angled lens picture of a pasture. So it's filtered through an artistic lens that is um, relatively neutralizing of anything that you would feel as alive as in front of you. You're not walking through the grass. You're looking at a picture of the grass. It's a very interesting exercise. I think it's one of the best in her collection, even though it's not the easiest for me to wear. Um, this is called Barry Linden. Barry Linden. I really think it's a masterpiece. Now, Stanley Kubrick died in, what, 1999 or something? So he couldn't have smelled this, but I wonder what he would have thought of it if he had. Barry Linden. So this is an herbal green... Um, slightly lacton, well, not lactonic, creamy in the anisey, angelic -y, fennel -y way um, of greenery. It's like milk sap. You know, when you break some things, the sap is clear, and when you break some other things, the sap is milky. That's kind of the idea. The third one I want to talk about is called Luberon. Luberon uh, is part of the um, Pure Perfume series, um, and it, it's launched in 2012. It's one of the older ones. All the perfume series um, are perfume concentrations in this size of a bottle. They were more expensive, of course, uh, and they all have this, this white label. So if you see a white label, you know that that means a higher concentration, respectively, a, a perfume... Um, one and this is a uh, lavender um, scent. Again, very creamy. It is herby. It has uh, wet and sweet undertones to these herbs. I'm thinking sweet marjoram and uh, basil. A little bit of summer savory as well. But think fat, juicy basil. Fat, juicy sweet marjoram, that kind of herbal. So it's not an astringent, it's not an oily herbal, it's not a, a dry and pungent like rosemary herbal. It's it's very um you might like this, Yana. You might like it. It's it's very um grown up. It has a little bit of uh um fougere undertones because there's some oak moss in there a little bit of Kumar, and it's a mix. Um, it, it is not barbershop lavender. It's a very different application of lavender um, so far. I, I actually don't enjoy I, either. I'm not a mint a uh, fragrance kind of person, and I'm barely starting to scratch the surface on lavender because it's not necessarily something I enjoy. I don't like the cold aspects of lavender, but this is neither. This is creamy and warm compared to um... Mems is aromatic. I, I mean, it's a, it's 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 a distillation of of. Uh, of terpenic versions and, and and facets. This is this is not that. This is a this is a uh, this is a peachy ionic <laughs> lavender. If there is such a thing, um, it's an interesting uh, thing to put on the radar. This doesn't have a lot of fans because it's off. For a lavender fragrance, it's it's different from what you would expect. Um, it's also um, slightly on the unisex 
um, channel, I'd say it doesn't sway. It's a little bit neutral. So for those who are looking for clearer, uh, more reference point kind of uh, applications of lavender, this is not it. This is different. So lactonic lavender, slightly. Um, ionic. It goes towards those uh, the, uh, violet-y bits that a, a lavender can have. I'm sure there's no valid, I mean, I'm not sure, but I, I don't believe there's any uh, violet declared or otherwise in here, but I do detect that kind of gentleness and uh, purpleness, if you want, that is not incisive. It's not lavender typical. <clears throat> I um, I am dreaming of burlesque without having tried it. I don't know why I feel like it's going to be right up my alley. Um, I have had Lady Day. Um, it, it didn't stay with me. It just didn't stick um, and have not tried the other ones. I do like the notes in all of them, and I'm looking for a, a Chinabre next. <laughs> because I can't get enough. But the one that I've used the most, the first one that I purchased, the one that was representative for, luckily, for the rest of the collection, the one that I looked at and I said, if everything else this woman makes is the same, I want it all, was this. Um, this is Exultat. Now, Exultat is uh, a name that scares me because I don't necessarily... Um, like to go too religious on anything, particularly not on stuff that has to do with superficial aspects of life, like beautifying myself, perfuming myself, attraction, and all the other stuff. I grew up in a highly orthodox society, and even though I'm not a practitioner, these things kind of like don't mix. <laughs> so putting a church in a bottle, eh, uh, I, you know, I'm okay with. And I seek it. I have a lot of church smells because I am a balsamic uh, through and through. Um, but this is very appropriate for the name. Exultat is right on the money. I feel like I can definitely roll my eyes back in my head and start speaking in tongues, which I do outside of religious experiences as well. I do that on a daily basis, particularly when I have a glass of wine or two or a bottle, but that's a different story. Um, it is exalted. It is exaltation. It does not cause exaltation, but it explains how some things um, have to do with intrinsic uh, trips, if you want, intrinsic excursions within oneself and explains how um, explains how um, actually I don't even know where I want to go with this because there there's so many places I can go with this that are not representative for anybody except for myself that is very I think it would be an imp imprudent uh, th thing to go there. Uh, let me talk about the fragrance, and maybe that's going to make it a little bit more um, clear to you. The fragrance is a, fra is a frankincense fragrance, uh, while not being a church fragrance. I do not see this as a church fragrance. I don't see it as a um, restrictive uh, Slightly violetly. There, there, there's a little bit of a candied violet that doesn't smell necessarily like violet, but participates in lifting this and giving it that type of velvetiness that usually balsamics are hard to achieve. Um, frankincense, particularly when it's pure, particularly when it's high quality, can be a little bit stark, can be a little bit crystalline, like looking through a glass, can be a little bit cold even, can be a little bit too citrusy for my taste. It is not the case here, not to say that this is not good quality frankincense, but um, but it isn't one of those that imposes distance. It's not separation. This is not 
Um, this is not something <clears throat> that you smell in a cold and very stark and austere <clears throat> environment where you go to profess your sins and to be forgiven where hell is upon you if you don't repent and all of that stuff. It's not like this. It's, um, it's again caressing. It's again illuminated in a way. It's again very light and full of light, full of air, just like everything else from Maria Candida Gentile. Easy to like, easy to understand, easy to internalize. This is not going to make you think of anything. This is going to give you an unbearable lightness of being. There you go. If any of you is into Milan Kundera, he broke my head in, in high school and college because my brain was broken. I was reading him and I was breaking inside my brain. Um, I don't know who speaks better Italian than myself. Profumo di Vecchi Corredi. Corredi, I don't know what Corredi is. Please look it up, somebody, and let us know. Uh, uh, the, uh, the fragrance of old Corredi, whatever this Corredi is. Um, this is a slightly woody, but light woods. This is slightly violets, violety, but light violets. Candid violets, but only the effect of them, not necessarily the smell of violets per se here. Um, this is slightly dry. This is slightly orangey. This is slightly herby. Very little, um, uh, something minty. I, I keep going to Thai basil in this one because it's slightly minty, but slightly basil -y. Again, fat, juicy, herby leaf. All of these it is mentioned in the notes list. Profumo di Vecchi Corredi. No idea. Google Translate. Um, I do um, feel a little bit of smoke. I do feel a little bit of myrrh in this. I feel a little bit of benzoic no note in here. Leave all of that aside because the notes are notes. Uh, you can read them yourselves. I can tell you a bunch of, you know, extra notes, odd notes that my nose perceives, but that's not the point in this fragrance. The point in this fragrance is that it's one of the cloudiest, heavenesty, <laughs> balsamic and res resonoids I've met. That sounds so bad. Let me rephrase. This smells like a cloud, yes. This smells like um, what came after you liberated yourself from all the um, kits. Kit, kit, what kind of kit? Try some more. <laughs> Vicky Corredi. <laughs> please, please help us out. This smells like post-religion. This is after you're done with your sins, after you're done with being scared, after you've done with fasting, after you're done with, uh, you know, hell and temptation and, you know, molesting priests or whatever. After you're done with everything that's bad and extremism and closeness, everything that's bad with religion, after you're past it and you understand that religion is within oneself, and oneness is easier than you thought, this is what this smells like. So that's why in this case, I believe the name is completely um, appropriate. I do not believe it's a stretch. I do not believe it's sacrilegious. I do not feel bad talking about what I just talked about <laughs> because it makes sense. So it is a resin post-churchy post-religion, not even post-church scent, which I've gone through. Um, if we were to talk about performance, which I never do because I don't care, I believe everything needs to be uh, judged face value. Um, and I believe 
everything is conditioned by what's in it. You can't expect the citrus cologne to last as long as a heavy labdanum uh, oud bomb. It's just not possible physically. Um, so I don't think we should ask them to. I think everything should be looked at as oneself, just like you should evaluate people in a report to themselves. Uh, otherwise, nobody's smart, nobody's beautiful, nobody's good, because there's always going to be somebody more beautiful, richer, gooder, smarter, and whatever. So let's look and judge people and report to what they are. This if you really insist, I know you guys don't, but if somebody made it this far and cares about performance, this is one of those things that you don't necessarily smell, but you feel. Yes, it smells. Yes, it lasts for hours. I don't know how many hours because I've never counted. Uh, this project projects really, really well. This is something that other people smell easily when they're in room in the room with you, but it's diffused just like a ghost. It's like a presence. It's like um, the heat of a person on a chair when you sit down after they're gone. You know somebody's there or has been there because you feel the heat. It's kind of like that. So this is not necessarily uh, Corredo de la Sposa can be intended as um, dowry. So dowry it's a dowry. It's a smell of a dowry, something that's been in a chest with resins and herbs. Huh. Hi, Smurfy Girly. We're so many today. And you made it through a whole hour, guys. This is called Exultat. And today we talked about Maria Candida Gentile, which is one of my favorite houses out there. It's definitely my top five for sure. Always has been since uh, I discovered it. Um, I have four fragrances in my house, one in my parents' house, and two others uh, passed through my hands. And this is Exultat. Exalted. Um, and that's it, folks. You made it through a whole hour of my reviewing and keeping stories. <laughs> um, if you like this kind of nerdy facts about obscure items in perfume and perfumery stick around i understand maybe it's a maybe it's an ex, 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 exorcist's <laughs> kit <laughs> old vintage tools keep kept in a wooden box interesting um if you like this kind of nerdy facts and history um on more obscure items and houses of perfume and perfumery stick around you know what you got to do. Tell others. If you go on and uh, discover these yourselves, please let me know what you think. Um, remember that you heard it here first. If you did, I think it's important to give credit when credit is due. And let's say it together. Keep it kind, but keep it real. Or should I say it? Keep it real, yeah. But if it's not true useful, or at least amusing, don't say it. Keep it kind, folks. And more importantly, the most important ever wrist is wherever you go, <laughs> make it better. I kiss you. Say bye. Thank you for joining. And I will see you next week. I have something interesting for next week, but <laughs> I'll see you then. And stream, and we are done.